And I do remember when I was a kid, and I'm a bit older than you guys. So when five I, years max. Uh, nah, thank you very <laughs> much for that. Um, uh, no, so basically, uh, when I was a kid, we did go to a vacation home or an apartment, mm -hmm. right? But um, the way my parents had to select it, they were actually calling the local tourism office. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Smack Hospitality Cast, recorded at the German Hotel Congress 2020 at the Intercontinental Hotel in Berlin. We had Tobias Wann as a guest on the show. Uh, he's the CEO of the Oyo Vacation Homes, and we talked to him about vacation homes, their impact on the hospitality industry, and the idea of preferred accommodation versus alternative accommodation. Have fun. Tobias, it's, it's great to have you. Thank you very much for being Thank here. You. For being here on on, on Smack, and uh, we just listened to you downstairs at the um, at the at the panel on on the panel that that you gave. Um, and before we before we get going with the nitty gritty, let's just quickly determine for those that have seen Oyo in the press on and off the difference between the hotel section and what you guys do um, now in the recently constructed vacations. Would you just briefly explain the the separation between the two? Yeah. So um, obviously uh, Oyo. Hotels existed uh, uh, for about six years now. Okay. Um, and uh, Ritesh, uh, the founder and CEO and I, we know each other for a while. And we started to talk a couple of years ago about um, our part of the hospitality industry, which is uh, vacation homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was always interested in learning what, what's happening on our side. And uh, at one point, uh, we started to discuss how it would be to actually yeah marry these two um uh, concepts and 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 potentially bring it under one umbrella and uh, uh, now uh, there is hotel the hotel branch under oyo um, and then there's the homes branch and with the acquisition of our company in 2019 um, we obviously became that home or your homes or your vacation homes brand yeah when you when you talked um downstairs just now at the at the hotel congress um tobias you you explained a little bit and we just talked about this uh, on on the elevator right up here um how it feels to be called an alternative mm -hmm. accommodation uh, section mm -hmm. when really you've changed a large majority of the way the business and hospitality works today you know, some people may agree with the change, some people may not. That's to be decided on a different scale. But give me your thoughts on, you know, being called alternative when really you guys, you know, have such an impact nowadays and you're in some ways taken, you've in some ways taken over from the classical hotel concept, you know, that we were accustomed to 15, 20 years ago when there was no Airbnb and there was no home away and, mm. and none of that. Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. I think uh, we are sometimes making the mistakes ourselves, uh, even I, uh, because uh, over the last couple of years, this term alternative accommodations has just been coined and, and, and many basically are using it. So it's easy to use it and people more or less, at least people from the industry more or less know what alternative accommodations are. But yes, <laughs> we are not doing ourselves a favor in using it because we are belittling our development and, and the size and the impact that we have in the hospitality industry. And uh, I was following the latest um, research numbers this morning on German uh, hotels and German REFPAR, uh, which uh, uh, is obviously the KPI that is used to measure growth in the hospitality industry. And uh, the guys could actually uh, uh, name a very precise number, which was 1.1%. And I said, I don't even think we are uh, counting it in 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 dot whatever. So uh, we are growing online and offline in our part of the industry, more like six, seven, eight percent. And uh, a company like OU Homes grows more or less twenty to thirty percent on the same inventory. So you see uh, that industry Defensive is growing numbers, a lot, yeah. uh, a lot more than the traditional hotel industry. And why is that? Because it is the preferred choice of the guests. Mm. And that is where I'm saying, and you're rightfully asking, if we call ourselves alternative 
um, we should call ourselves preferred mm. because that is where um, people would like to stay rather than in the hotel. How large is the Oyo vacation homes today? How many properties do you guys have? Uh, great question. Um, we have just announced uh, last week that we are um, adding uh, the um, business of uh, the vacation homes business of TUI, German TUI. Uh, that added another uh, 17,000 houses on our roughly uh, uh, 35, 40,000 houses on the fully managed side. Um, and then we own also a marketplace called Traumferienwohnung here in Germany. They have about 90,000 homes. So by now, I'd say we are roughly 150,000 uh, homes and apartments under management. If you look at the, the history and the way, you know, your your side of the hospitality business has developed can you give me a, a sort of a you know your opinion on how that's developed because i can i can thoroughly remember times where when you traveled you went to you know you went to look for a hotel that was pretty much it and and the traveling in one way or another was for the well off because at the time the hotel was more or less still a, a fairly expensive thing to to or hotel room was a more expensive thing to get and then all of a sudden the home aways the airbnbs of the world came along um And now you can you can travel to London for you know 20 euros on a low cost carrier, and you can stay for 60 euros in a in a shared apartment or whatever the, the mm -hmm. situation may be. How incredible, in your opinion, has that change been, considering of where we're coming from? Um, so interestingly enough, I'm uh, telling you that this uh, vacation home industry obviously exists for probably a hundred years already in Europe, right? And and I do remember when I was a kid, and I'm a bit older than you guys. So when five I, years max. Uh, I thank you very much for that. Um, uh, no, so basically, uh, when I was a kid, we did go to a vacation home or an apartment, right? Mm -hmm. But um, the way my parents had to select it, they were actually calling the local tourism office. And this tourism office then sent a little catalog, and that catalog yeah. didn't even have pictures. It was actually uh, uh, probably 400 lines of vacation homes and vacation apartments and the phone number next to it. It was so a listing, basically. It was a listing, but yeah. it was literally a line per listing or per house. And and uh, so, so my parents probably... I should ask them, but I guess <laughs> the only way it worked back then is they called, they, they, they looked a couple of those they liked, and then they called all of them and see if there's still availability for that week where they wanted to go. So you can see, I mean, it, the, the industry already existed, but it was a horrible experience, yeah. as we would say today, right? Yeah. Um, so what uh, uh, companies like HomeAway um, and later Airbnb and others actually have done is they have taken this offline analog process and digit digitized it yeah. right um, and that was the first step in uh, into basically the, the the world as we know it today and then what happened on top of that obviously is as this growth became uh, apparent, or, yeah. apparent and as it became easier or as easy to book a vacation home as easy as a hotel obviously the supply side realized oh wow i mean there's a lot of demand coming into this segment um, uh, and, uh, and Airbnb, uh, all the respects to Airbnb, because what Airbnb did is they made it extremely easy for some part of the supply, namely the ones in cities and the urban mm -hmm. inventory, to actually um, uh, get online. Right. Yeah. So there were two things happening with this digitization. It was a lot easier for guests to actually book a vacation home and it's increasingly easier as we talk. And it is a lot easier for homeowners for apartment owners to actually enter this market that was more or less a more professional market in the past and and those two developments are literally adding fuel to the fire can you tell us a bit out of your experience at home away how was it this whole process of digitalizing the vacation home owners telling them you guys should now sell your rooms online and that this will create a completely new market for them how was that process and so I mean, it was obviously I was at home away. I started at home away around 2010, 11. Um, so the company was already going for um, a few years. Uh, clearly, what what happened is obviously with all of these um, offerings, these marketplaces, these uh, um, they be, I mean, you, you saw it not only in the vacation home industry, you saw it everywhere that 
people realized it is much, much easier to actually be online than offline, or uh, it is also much more successful to be online than offline. And, and we, we did a lot to actually make sure that homeowners know about us. So there's, it's a typical digital marketing acquisition, acquisition strategy. Um, but then also a lot of the successful homeowners in a certain place, they referred basically to their friends, to their neighbors. Look, I mean, I'm really, really successful. You should try out Fevo Direct in Germany or Abritel in, 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 in France and, and or VRBO in, in the US, all uh, home away companies, by the way. So um, it was a typical process that we saw in many other industries as well. They, um, um, they were obviously, they had homes and they were looking for easier and better ways to distribute them, cheaper ways, and then we were there. If you if you look, um, Tobias, allow me to, to take a step back in time when you were still with with Home Away, and I, I realize that you're now obviously with with Oyo. But if we look at the industry of you know of um, accommodation, and let's stick with alternative accommodation or preferred, let's call it preferred accommodation from now. <laughs> so with preferred I love accommodation, that, by the way, yeah. <laughs> um, the majority of the people will probably, if you ask them, you know, name a company that does preferred accommodation. The obvious answer, and for better or worse, will be Airbnb because mm -hmm. it's it's out there. They've you know obviously been on on um, what they think is the forefront of the of the development. Um, you just said when uh, prior prior to the recording downstairs um, that you know Home Away in essence was there before in time. In one way, can you can you comment on on what you think the 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 media domination of Airbnb has brought to this industry, in your opinion, has it made it easier? Has it made it more complicated for for the others like Oyo and, and HomeAway, which were you know our similar competitors? Yeah, I think um, first of all, I have a ton of respect for what Brian and, and 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 Nate and and the others at Airbnb have actually built in those now. Yeah. What is it? 15 years or um, yeah, roughly 15 years, 14, 15 years of the existence of their company. It is, uh, I think it is for all of us uh, back then at HomeAway, but also if you were just uh, basically looking at this industry without being right in there, it was an amazing to see how this brand has basically developed. And what, what, what Brian and the team has done amazingly well is exactly that, creating a brand. And you create a brand through offering top-notch service and experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think uh, when you look at Airbnb and when you looked at Airbnb over all the last years, you, you saw that um, they were delivering an experience and uh, that was always at their time, it was always top-notch. Mm. Uh, and then they had a great story and they told the story really well, let's be yeah. very clear. And they told it again and again and again. Yeah. Uh, the media loved the story, and so you created a uh, an avalanche, so to say, that also happens only once, probably every ten to twenty years in an industry, right? And 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 Airbnb was there, timing was right, story was good, experience yeah. was great, and it was a good mixture. Yeah. Do you think also it had a difference the American way of doing marketing and of creating a hype compared to the home away, which is a bit more, let's say, the the European and trying to to perform. And not so much so tell that Home Away is also a U.S. company. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I think um, in hindsight, what was always, uh, I mean, where Airbnb probably beat everybody in this industry, not only Home Away, was exactly their idea of how they want to position themselves mm -hmm. yeah. and how they are building the brand and how they are telling the brand and um, being close to the guests, being close to the homeowners um, and making this such an important part of their DNA. So you call it storytelling that um, I would not want to use this because storytelling would literally, at least in my view of this word, would sound a bit like, okay, we have a mediocre product and, we, and then we paint a great picture around it. I think it started with a really amazing product in a time, um, let's not forget, I mean, it was the recession 2008, 2009, yeah. 2010 yep. that really brought the Airbnb product to life or to that to, to boosted the growth right because people were looking for ways to make extra money with their um with the real estate which was a product that up until now if you lived in there you couldn't really market it right i mean you can not rent out an apartment that you live in but airbnb enabled that so there's a combination of many things right you had the market it was a timing thing um but it also was a really good product and a 
a really great brand telling story so to say yeah. if you if you look at the the development that you have you've now seen with with airbnb we've you know we're all somewhat informed and read the news we we heard that hotel tonight was integrated into the airbnb um the company and you said a very interesting sentence that i i thought was interesting to hear is you said what well, you know airbnb is probably the the ota to watch at the moment um or that the upcoming ota Explain. I mean, for starters, you know, the hotels that are listening to this will probably jump out of their seats now. But tell me your your thought process behind saying that, um, and is that also a trend that you guys at Oyo Homes are are somewhat looking to go the same route? So, I think I can obviously I come when I say this. I come from now. I use the same term preferred yeah. uh, accommodations. <laughs> Really love it. Hopefully, yeah. we're we can set, establish. You're, 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 you should. We should probably. Bre- uh, yeah. yeah, you heard it here uh, first. <laughs> trade market, but yeah. no. Um, uh, so, in the preferred uh, uh, accommodations industry, things are uh, probably a little bit different than they are in the hotel industry. I know it is a little bit different. Um, also, when it comes to distributions, so there is, for example, players in the hotel industry that we don't really see in our part of the industry, yeah. like HRS. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, Airbnb um, needs to grow, wants to grow, and also wants to grow beyond just this product that they initially created, which was primary homes. So yeah. they added at one point secondary homes, which in our terms means those are homes that are literally built for the use of vacation homes or vacation apartments. Yeah. So they, they would only be occupied by guests. That's the difference to the many urban homes that Airbnb you started with that were a mix between primary uh, and secondary. And so uh, basically uh, with this, Airbnb um, became a household name for um, many of um, the younger uh, generation when it comes to actually vac- making or going on vacation. Yeah. Um, and uh, as we call them, Generation EasyJet is that the? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> you belong to this generation. Uh, uh, um, but but the point is, the, in in our part of the industry, obviously there is a player like Airbnb that may or may not be as as dominant in the hotel on the hotel side, but it's probably coming. Uh, Airbnb clearly is now one of the top three distribution platforms they would obviously hate me for saying it uh, or describing them like that but it is one of the top three distribution platforms when it comes to um, uh, vacation homes vacation apartments there is obviously typical hotel platforms like booking.com who are increasingly adding um, our uh, type of supply there is Expedia that has acquired um, home away for close to four billion a couple years ago um, and then there is Airbnb now. And then there's numerous others like all your vacation homes who have very, very strong and established brands as well, right? We have brands like Traumferienwohnung, Belle Villa, uh, uh, Dance Center. And, and uh, those are also playing a very important role in our industry. So that said, yes, uh, um, I think you have in our part of the industry a, a player with Airbnb that probably isn't that visible in in distributing hotel inventory yeah. today, yet, yeah. yet, but I think you mentioned the hotel tonight acquisition, and and that team uh, will for sure add a lot of, uh, uh, um, yeah, experience speed. and speed. speed, to that speed. Yeah. yeah, you said that vacation homes is evolving quite fast, but it's still very fragmented. We see a lot of online players all wanting to have a share of the pie. Where do you see all your vacation homes differentiate, and what's your vision for the future of the industry? So um, we talked a lot about distribution, right? Uh, we talked a lot about uh, the matching process between a platform and a guest. And we're booking and Expedia and HomeAway and uh, Airbnb are pretty strong. What, what differentiates us from all those four we just mentioned is that we do that plus we do a lot more because we are the preferred partner on the supply side. That means... We do a lot to make renting easy for homeowners and especially for those homeowners who do not want to do it themselves. You can think it of a little bit of like if you have a pure marketplace like Airbnb, you need to do everything yourself, more or less. 
They, ha they offer some technology help, but it needs to be scalable, right? You have to make your own pictures. You have to upload your pictures. You have yeah. to set your own pricing. You have to write your own description. And then of third party services, which there is, a, it, yeah. there are some small companies who are trying to help here because every, I mean, not everyone wants to do that. Yeah. We would be a company that has always done it the other way around, right? We would have actually always said, we take you by the hand. Yeah. We um, take the pictures for you. We write the content and discuss it with you. We set the pricing together with you. We take the booking. Yeah. We handle the booking. If someone has a problem, they can call our 24-7 call center. We fix it first level. I mean, if there's something that only a homeowner can fix, then we'll discuss it with the homeowner. But So it's a, it's a very different service approach, especially towards the homeowner. Okay. Um, The picture I always use is you go to a, a new country or a new city, you can actually either go to a rental car uh, uh, and, and get a car to self-drive or you get a chauffeur. Yeah. We would be the chauffeur. But we also have a marketplace with Traumfein Wohnung, which is comparable to this rental car. So we have offer, we offer it, both. Is it not a bit what all your hotels did in India and in China for the hotels there, setting a standard making it easier to distribute the hotel rooms? And is it like the way which maybe works better for more established hotel markets that you then go into the vacation home market? The idea is similar. The idea is indeed to say um, uh, wherever basically there is supply that cannot really market and promote themselves yeah. the same way that a very professional company would do with all their investments, Then you go to OYO, or your vacation homes, or your hotels. So whether you run a small non-branded budget hotel that cannot really invest into dynamic pricing, yield management, all of these things, yeah. you go to OYO, we do it for you. If you have a vacation home where you don't have the time or maybe not have the know-how to, to kind of rent it out yourself, you come to us and we do it for yeah. you. So it's, a, it's indeed a professionalization of the market. How do you see um, the the other way around of what's happened between Booking.com and Expedia with these companies trying to get a footprint into your preferred accommodation? I'm really loving this term, by the way, with your preferred accommodation uh, section and trying to tap into that. You know, Booking is obviously um, there was there was some acknowledgement that this was eventually going to happen, I guess, in one way or another, because the, the, the hotel room supply at some point when you've penetrated the market to the point that they have. They were looking for other ways to, to, to go forward. Is that something where you say, well, we're not really too upset about it because it's the natural way of how things were going to go one way or another. And we're trying to get or, or you know, part of the preferred accommodation industry is likewise getting into the hotel business. Or would you say, actually, it might have been smarter if we do the preferred accommodation as an Airbnb does not tap into the hotels and Booking.com and Expedia stays with just doing hotels? Look, I mean, I've always been of the opinion that you cannot fight what a guest or in, in this case demand, what the demand side yeah. wants. Yeah. If, if there is enough demand on Booking.com to find preferred accommodations, <laughs> um, then obviously there should be preferred accommodations on, book, on Booking. Yeah. And so it's the market who tells Booking or us to what to do, right? It, it, we had a similar st strategic question a couple of years ago. Where, I mean, again, I said we have some very strong brands in Europe, very yeah. well-known brands. Belvilla, for example. I mean, I'm from uh, Amsterdam, uh, so we are um, a, a company that is very strong in the Netherlands. Belvilla is actually the household name for vacation homes in the Netherlands. If you go yeah. on the streets in, in Amsterdam and ask name a vacation home company, uh, you would actually Bel get Belvilla as the number one choice. Yeah. So uh, I'm telling this to, to, to um, explain that we had to make a decision ourselves to say, do we want to offer our inventory on other companies platform on Airbnb, on Expedia, on yeah. Booking.com. It was, I mean, in, in hindsight, it may actually sound an easy one, right? A couple of years ago, there could have been, there were actually debate to say, come on, we are a very strong brand ourselves. If we are going on Booking.com, we may lose market share. But the, the point I try to make is 
you have to be there where your customers are. And if your customers make a decision to actually be on Booking.com because maybe Booking.com spends more money in marketing or can spend more money in marketing or whatsoever, then you need to follow that. Yeah. And and we took the decision then to say, okay, as long as we have great and exclusive supply, in our case, vacation homes, vacation apartments, it doesn't matter whether they actually are on Booking.com or on Bill Villa or on, on any other platform. As long as a guest finds it, books it, and has a great, great stay and a great experience when they are with us. Where do you see the vacation home story going, um, Tobias? Because you've, we've talked about you know the hotel industry getting involved. We talked about the accommodation industry getting involved with the hotels. Um, you know, is there is there a limit to the to the synergies and the and the mix that we're we're getting in in, in hospitality um, right now? And, You, I, I know, or I gather from what you just said that you're, 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 you have a very strong opinion on the fact that the guest will somewhat dictate that. Is that safe to say, in your opinion? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, if you don't have a product that, uh, or if you have a product that guests don't like yeah. or consumers don't like, I mean, good luck. That's an uphill battle. <laughs> um, you may or may not be able to force people into your product, but at the end of the day, it's not. It's it's it will not be able to. You will not be able to win. Um, That's why preferred uh, um, accommodations are growing so uh, uh, so strongly because the value for money, the experience is so much better in, in some of the cases in, in, in probably in many cases when it comes to vacation uh, destinations than hotels yeah. because you get a, a house or an apartment for yourself for the more or less the same price of a hotel room. And if you have kids or if you have pets, um, Good luck in actually trying to kind of squeeze them in in a couple of rooms in a, in, in a hotel, right? Yeah. It's not it's yeah. not a great experience. If you get a wonderful home and you pay almost the same, if not less, than in a hotel, that that is obviously the preferred choice. So my point, if you ask me uh, about the future, uh, our part of the industry will continue to grow because we are still in our infants. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's an old industry. But the level of sophistication, the level of concentration, the level of experience that, uh, for example, hotels are currently deliver um, is, is still pretty nascent on, on, on the preferred accommodation side. We don't use a lot of technology. Um, we, you don't have someone who actually uh, 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 delivers you a, cr a cradle of beer or champagne or, or lemonade. Uh, or popcorn, uh, or popcorn, like I have it here. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, uh, when you come home from a beach, yeah. uh, uh, but this is all. I mean, clearly doable, right? I mean, you, the, 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 you you can certainly have these type of services, and you yeah. will increasingly see these type of th services in our part of the industry. And with this, it will just create a, an even better product. Yeah. And uh, so, I'm I'm not at all worrying about our part of the industry. Um, it will be interesting to see what we can add from an experience point of view. It will be uh, interesting to see what technology can add. Um, and uh, so we'll probably, when, when we meet again in a couple of years and look back, uh, uh, we'll see that, that we have been successfully growing and, and have even more happier customers. And where do you see the, the market? Do you see more players like you taking over more and more vacation homes? Because you say we outsource it, everything is centralized or they outsource it to you and everything is centralized, especially technology. Or do you think more and more owners will buy homes or will buy or will build buildings with vacation homes or service departments and will then kind of operate their own uh, and buy their own technology? So you will probably see um, a few companies emerging that are trying to build vacation homes at scale. Mm -hmm. And it exists already. Uh, 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 there's companies like Sonder and others yeah. who are doing things like that. Um, but the vast majority in our industry are actually private homeowners who have one home, maybe two homes. Um, and, and, and those will continue to be the... The, the majority for the for the foreseeable future so companies like us who are able to deliver a great service to those homeowners remember what i said about a great product um, they will be able to grow if if you as as a smaller company are not able to invest that much in technology in experience in hospitality in in, in, in 
pricing tools whatsoever, it will probably become more difficult. So we will see a bit more for concentration. And um, new trends like Booking.com uh, Booking bringing in star rating for vacation homes. You spoke about it before on stage. I also was at an event in Switzerland where Hotellerie Suisse brings their own star rating for service departments and uh, vacation homes, especially in the mountain areas. How do you see that? And do you think there's going to be one certain standard which will dictate, let's say, the one from Booking.com and the association's are a bit late uh, setting this up and how do you think this will actually be transferable to private homeowners? So um, I totally understand what booking.com is doing. I mean, we're also both based in Amsterdam and we have uh, a good opportunity to talk and chat and, um, and I clearly understand that the number one filter that people on booking.com use is the filter for stars yeah. when they search for something and they remember they search for accommodations not necessarily for vacation homes or hotels specifically they say i want to i want to i need a i need a i need a bed or i need a, a roof over my over head, my head yeah. um uh, in in a certain in, in a certain uh, part of the world in, in a certain period right so they would they would go to the platform and enter this and then they would most likely select for stars to kind of give some orientations hotels have this process the selection process uh, that that basically every hotel or almost every hotel has a star and has an official rating uh, uh, attached to it this doesn't exist it or this does not exist and will probably not exist for the foreseeable future in the vacation homes industry because it's too too diverse um, and too widespread so uh, what booking.com did is to say okay we try to apply an artificial intelligence uh, process to read through all of the amenities and read through locations and everything and come up with our own um, uh, point rating I think it is it's not a star rating and again the reason for that is because the guest demands it and when the guest demands it the platform you has better to get offer. going yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. if you if you look at the other side and um, as well as I need to ask this because like I, like I told you before one or two hoteliers tend to listen to this podcast so I need to ask wonderful this. <laughs> um, there's a lot of or there has been and I and I feel like a lot of that has quieted down already a little bit um, but I still want to get your your very honest opinion on this a lot of controversy about um, you know some of the vacation homes and I realize this is more for the urban mm -hmm. stays where um, you know there's an argument especially in the city where we are here in in, in Berlin um, that it's taking away you know space for 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 potential inhabitants in in, in the city. At the same time, the hotels are are screaming that you know they they don't that some of those companies um, in the preferred accommodation sector don't have to oblige by the same rules, um, taxation, and and so on and so forth. In your very honest opinion, is that more screaming because we're scared, or is it is there is there what, what's your what's the take of someone who's who's been you know involved in the other side? So. Um uh, I, you may or may not know I've been uh, president of the German uh, Vacation Rental Association for many, many years. So I'm very familiar with this discussion. Discuss, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, the pure numbers, I mean, it's a, it's a whole political animal. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the number of vacation apartments in Berlin, you, you mentioned Berlin as an example, is so small. It would not even make any difference on the housing market in Berlin. The housing market in Berlin has the problems because over the last 20 years, there were not enough apartments built, yeah. period. Yeah. It has nothing to do with vacation homes yeah. or our industry. Um, secondly, you, you, I don't know if you guys followed uh, uh, the, um, the interesting numbers that were shared on the stage today. The hotel industry has built an amazing amazing amount of hotels new hotels over the last couple of years in cities and you saw that there is one third of hotels in 2019 that actually have less ref par that degrow yeah. year over year two thirds still grow one third degrow that's a sizable number yeah um so what's an easy way to actually get more guests is to potentially 
carve out preferred accommodations, as we call them, and this way force people to stay in the hotel. Yeah. So it's not their preferred choice, but in, because you don't have a lot of alternatives or not yeah. enough alternatives, um, you would need, still need to go to a hotel. Yeah. So if you are a hotel owner who sees degrowth or sees the threat of degrowth, then um, obviously you have an interest of keeping entrance into the market out. So these are the two things I see. Clearly, we want compliance and we want to make sure that everyone who wants to stay in a vacation home in the city should find the right apartments that are licensed and that are safe. We are clearly at the forefront of all that. So there may be some ex exaggerations that need to be called out. But in general, this industry, as I said in the beginning, and as you pointed out, is growing extremely fast because of consumer choice. Mm -hmm. And... If, I mean, if you try to kind of hold up this consumer choice, you will not win. Yeah, you won't succeed. Tell me um, if we've, if you know, the, the whole idea of consumer choice is obviously, you know, based on experience. And we've talked about this a little bit uh, before before the recording as well, where, where you said, you know, it's 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 the guest's choice. And that, that combines obviously with the experience. And most of the experiences that guests will have in vacation homes will be, will be good, will be, you know, in some cases great. Um, and, and also the aspect of value for value kicks in, value for money kicks in. If you think of the experience, has the or has the way we like an experience in hospitality changed because of this new option? Because you know people were accustomed to the fact that if you travel to London, your hotel room was probably going to be fifteen square meters at best, including the bathroom, probably. Yeah, and, and now you for a price of one hundred and eighty pounds, and now for one hundred and eighty pounds, I could probably get a decent you know, apartment on, on Oyo or whoever else I may choose to, choose to, to stay with. So has, sure. our, has yeah. our perception changed of, of how the experience should look in hospitality? But isn't that great? I mean, isn't that great yeah. if, if, if that's the ultimate uh, uh, result that uh, because of this, people now, as you describe it, could pick an apartment for with 100 square meters for the same price than they would basically have to uh, pay for a hotel room that is 15 square meters. Listen, I mean, there may be still and there will be still enough use cases where someone wants to pick a hotel. I mean, if you if you maybe arrive like one o'clock in the morning and you need some room service and you have a, 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 an, an early morning meeting in the city or whatsoever, you need to get a quick cap, all of these things. I mean, yes, there may be a good reason to stay in a hotel. Yeah. Uh, but... Again, as I said, let the consumer decide, and uh, uh, the more choice we have, the, the better it is actually for the consumer to actually choice. choose. I wanted to take a little step back to you and, and your career. You were heading Leisure Group, and then the big acquisition from Oyo Rooms. Can you uh, can you tell us a bit how was that transition for you personally? Changing was there a big structural change or actually did they say keep it as it's going and we just give you more cash so you can be a bit more aggressive in the growth strategy yeah it's the latter i mean i am lucky that we basically are uh, a relatively unique part of the audio group right so um there wasn't something to integrate with yeah uh, uh, and Uh, so we've been asked to continue what we've always been doing successfully and use some of the possibilities that we now have with OYO, which is access to capital and which is access to capabilities technologies. Yeah. Um, and so clearly this was, this was uh, um, maybe a unique situation that not everybody has when they're Trust going that. through an M&A process. Um, and then clearly also... Culturally, it's very interesting to become part of a hyper-growth sure. company. Yeah. Um, not that we've been a, a turtle growth company, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but we've obviously um, had a little bit uh, different uh, uh, growth uh, background possibilities, and yeah. possibilities yeah. Uh, than, than Oyo has. Um, and for all of us, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to see what can happen if, 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 if someone is, yeah, going after growth and looking at oyo in general you everybody knows it's like pre-ipo looking at it a bit um u.s growth is not always that uh, easy at the moment 
especially uh, for all your hotels. How do you see the future of the company? What do you see the next five years? What what are the main drivers? What are the main challenges for you, for Oyo in general, and maybe also for Oyo vacation homes? So, I mean, I can obviously primarily speak about us as the homes segment. Um, we we have an, a huge opportunity in front of us. As I think I, I, I said it uh, a couple times today, that um, the market is highly fragmented and probably underinvested. Is that is that good or bad or both? Uh, I think as long as you were able to deliver towards the expectations of homeowners and guests as a small market participant, it was probably good That's or fine. it was fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but we talked about some of the things that are now happening in our part of the market that is technology driven revenue management yield management i mean the the industry is maturing yeah and not every company that may actually have 100 houses or 50 houses or even 500 houses under management is able to do the same investments um, so there will be some concentration in the market because there is some benefic some benefits of scale yeah um, in general I, again, I keep coming back to the same mantra. Size in itself isn't something that matters yeah. because if you are not able to deliver a superior product just because of your size, you will go under or yeah. you will basically not achieve much. Anyways. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you can use size to deliver a better product because you can invest more and you can scale better or you can negotiate better on behalf of your homeowners yeah. uh, when it comes to distribution and all of this, then you have a winning combination. Yeah. Uh, Tobias, let me ask two, two or three more questions before we need to let you go to the airport because I, I mm -hmm. don't want to get in trouble anywhere for uh, not for making you miss your flight. Uh, tell me a, a very probably a very stupid question. But have you stayed in an Airbnb before? I of course. I mean, uh, uh, I am probably a veteran in this industry now. Um, <laughs> in staying or in working? <laughs> in staying and working. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, uh, the moment uh, you, in our industry, usually, uh, at least in the traditional vacation rental industry, the moment uh, guests are discovering it for themselves is when, when, when they become a family. Yeah. Um, because that is, I mean, with a couple, you can still easily share a room in a hotel. Yeah. When you have a kid, two, three, whatever, it becomes more and more difficult. And yeah. then add a dog to it and yeah. good luck. Good luck, yeah. Um, so uh, that was the, so the moment when we became a family is the moment when we started to um, uh, look out for vacation homes and apartments. Yeah. That was actually a little bit before I joined the industry. So I knew about uh, uh, the product, so to say, before I um, became a member of the industry. Since then, obviously, I took every opportunity to learn and I stayed in uh, 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 Airbnbs, I stayed in Homeaways, I stayed in uh, Belle Villas, yeah. uh, in Traumferienwohnungen uh, um, and uh, uh, also in Oyo hotels yeah. and everything. So uh, that, I mean, that curiosity you need to have if you're in this industry, you cannot judge it and work in it from the outside. We have a tradition on this uh, podcast, Tobias, that at the end, we'd like to ask uh, three questions that are the same for everyone with a request for a short-ish answer. So okay. if you uh, don't mind uh, doing that. In your very own opinion, the next big thing in hospitality is? The next big thing in hospitality is um, a combination of more technology with a, um, used for a better guest focus. The last trip for leisure purposes, not business, I realize business was probably today, um, for leisure purposes that you took was to? Actually, I, I mean, I should probably recall this instantly. I guess it was uh, last summer and we went to the US uh, and with the family. What was the most memorable part about that, that trip from a, from a hospitality perspective um, in terms of the trip, flight, accommodation, whatever it may be. I can tell you. Uh, uh, we were uh, going to New York, uh, yeah. amongst other places in the U.S., and we had uh, an apartment. It was actually a house, a small house in 
in the Upper East Side, uh, uh, and uh, it was an amazing experience, right? And and this is exactly what we were ta talking about. Sorry, yeah. it's a bit longer that's now. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's exactly. I mean, try to find a hotel room for a family or two or three hotel rooms for a family in New York yeah. for a fair price in the Upper East yeah. Side. Yeah. And, and 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 that's a real but, preferred accommodation. It's absolutely <laughs> impossible because those rooms are indeed 15 square meters. Yeah. So if you want to stay there for let's say a week or so with your family and spend time in New York. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. So we had this wonderful apartment or slash small house there, um, which was a great experience and, and it was very memorable. And my favorite part about hospitality is? Uh, satisfaction, delivering satisfaction for guests and homeowners. Tobias, one more thing, a quick shout out to your daughter who's just gotten involved with podcasts. So if she does listen to this, that we quickly say hello. Thank you very much uh, for your time and we'll see you soon. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks, Greg. That's it for this episode, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. As always, don't forget to check out what there is to know about Smack at smack.media or on our YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, or Facebook accounts. We'll see you next time. <laughs>